delighted to be back here. Um, let's see what we can discover uh, this time. I, I would say, and it's a really interesting uh, discussion that you're posing, because unless the nation is supportive of what the government does, um, then it does become difficult to justify increases in defence spending. But I simply ask, you know, your your viewers and listeners to to recognise just how contested and fragmented our world is becoming, and ask yourselves the question I pose regularly you know do you think the world will be more safe or less safe in five years time and most people think that we're on a dangerous trajectory the question therefore is what do we do about it when countries like russia china and iran aren't just becoming more assertive but actually creating an alliance to challenge our international rules-based order and there's also a reluctance perhaps being taken advantage of of the west collectively willing to intervene to put fires out before they get to uh, large. And isn't the reason, if we've entered this let, era let, let of instability... Let me just come back on that, device. Isn't the reason we in Britain, for example, become less willing is because it hasn't gone so well for us when we have got uh, involved. I think plenty of people in this country still feel deeply scarred by our interventions in Afghanistan and Iraq. Many people feel completely misled by political leaders of the time. And this goes across, this isn't a party political issue because obviously it was Blair when it came to um, Iraq. Um, we have seen the ramifications of that worldwide. I was talking earlier about our intervention in the Balkans, which was necessary, that did go well. But that feels like ancient history. So you can't, I don't think we can be censorious about the British public when they're saying, hang on, we've just, we've had enough. We've got enough problems at home. Why are we getting involved every time? So I, I don't disagree with anything you've just said. Uh, we've actually uh, lost our uh, credibility, if you like, because of Iraq, which I was against before we even invaded. I saw no justification for that. And I've spoken very frankly you know, about the huge mistakes over two decades of us imposing a Western solution on a country that wasn't ready for it. But the consequence of those two events have then allowed other authoritarian states to recognize our weakness, our uh, unwillingness to now step forward. The reason why I believe that Putin invaded Ukraine is because he saw a reluctance for the West to intervene so that we're now being taken advantage of. And the question is today, apart from the stuff that's happened in the past, I don't dismiss it, but what are we going to do about it? There is a consequence for not stepping up and supporting international shipping in the Red Sea. The consequence isn't just because uh, Iran will become ever assertive in the Middle East, it's because it affects our economy, our prosperity here in the UK, because our gas comes from Qatar, a lot of it. And that, uh, the cost of that will affect our pockets here. 95% of the stuff that we get in the UK comes by sea. If international shipping lanes are disrupted, that affects our economy. So. There are question marks about us uh, doing nothing or perhaps at least looking for solutions and uh, utilizing our convening power to work with other like-minded nations to defend our international rules-based order, which I stress are being eroded by countries deliberately seeking to exploit our weakness. OK, understood. But if you look at the Houthi intervention, for example, um, we were told that that we had to take that action, well, not least because they had struck a, a, a UK naval, a Royal Navy ship, but also because it would act as a deterrent to further strikes by the Houthis. It hasn't acted as a deterrent. They've carried on. I was just reading the other day that they've attacked um, a US military uh, uh, naval ship again. So it, it didn't work, did it? So what's what's plan? What, what happens next? Does it mean further intervention by us, more missile strikes? That's where people become cynical. No, I think if you thought that a couple of strikes by the UK, United Kingdom and America would then turn the Houthis uh, running, then I'm, I'm afraid you're mistaken. I didn't they think that. No, I didn't think that. This is what Rishi test, Sunak said, may, Tobias. This wasn't they're me. Continue, they're going to continue to test our resilience, our determination to stay the ground. And unfortunately, and it isn't just Iraq and Afghanistan, you can add Libya, Somalia, Yemen, uh, all these countries where we've wandered into, shown them some interest to try and deal with governance and security, and then backed away, leaving chaos to ensue. And the question now is, as the world gets more dangerous, not less, what are we going to do about it? So the Houthi situation, which you, you know, quite rightly, uh, you know, highlighted, that's not going to end in a matter of days or indeed weeks. There's a, I was Middle East minister, I tried to strike a deal with uh, the various nations that are in the region, the Arab nations, and it did the Yemenis and the Houthis 
as well. Mm. There's a governance structure which has not been determined in the longer uh, in the longer term as to how the Houthis sit with the South. This is a country that got its independent, the South, from the UK. We have a vested interest to provide not just security in the Red Sea, but also clarity as to how the Houthis sit in from a governance perspective in Yemen, for which the Saudi Arabia have done a poor job in trying to sort out. Certainly, Again, another certainly true, but hang on, we're coming to the end of our section. I, I need to ask you the question of the hour. What should the UK's role be going forward in a military sense in terms of our intervention, our, our place in the world stage? What should it be now? So this is 1939 all over again. There are er errant nations are not held to account by international institutions. Authoritarian regimes are rearming. We need to uh, uh, invest in our defence posture to work with allied nations to defend what's important to us. If we don't, if we take, turn a blind eye and just say these things that happen afar, they will come back and haunt us, exactly as it did in 1939. But what's the doctrine? In a sentence, what do you think the doctrine should be? We've got Grant, I look, watched that whole blooming thing, Tobias, you'll be bl glad to know. Not many people did. Uh, and he... No, I was <laughs> there. Well, I was there. <laughs> poor you. Uh, sorry, didn't say that. Um, I mean, God, it did go on a bit, didn't it? Anyway, the point is, he had these three words, deter, lead, defend, right? That's, that's his slogan. If you could sum up what you believe the doctrine should be for the UK when it comes to military intervention, uh, going forward, what would it be? Well, the, the doctrine must be twofold. Firstly, to defend our rules-based order, but to recognise that it is eroding. It is no longer fit for purpose in modern times. Globalisation is being challenged by authoritarian states. And unless there's a wake-up call with nations like ours to work with our allies to stand up for what we believe in, what we we're willing to defend, what is important to us, I'm afraid we're going to find out the hard way that our adversaries will take advantage of our timidity. Tobias Elwood, former chair of Defence Select Committee and Conservative MP for Bournemouth East. Thank you very much indeed for joining me um, this afternoon. So